On June 20th, 2024, Canadian actor Donald Sutherland passed away at the age of 88. I remember Donald Sutherland in a movie from the late 1970s. It was a science fiction horror film that had a big impact on me. The film? Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today we're going to talk about The Body Snatchers by Jack Finney, 1955. We're also going to look at two film adaptations of this novel. Actually, the first film adaptation that we're going to be looking at is based on the serialized novel from the magazine Collier's. But let's first talk about the novel itself. This is one of those science fiction concepts that many, many people know. In some ways, it's a cross between John Wyndham's The Day of the Triffids and John W. Campbell's The Thing, or the short story known as Who Goes There. It joins the other plant science fiction of the 50s, from The Triffids to The Death of Grass, and now The Seed Pods from Space. The novel is a first-person narrative following a doctor in a small town in California. He starts having patients come to him that say someone that they know isn't really who they know, an imposter. They can't tell exactly why, but it just doesn't seem like they're emotionally there. Our doctor is reunited with an old flame from high school, and together they face this mystery in the town. As they progress, they realize that this is something beyond a psychiatric emergency. It seems to be catching or contagious. What is happening to the people of the town? Are people becoming imposters? As large seed pods are discovered in people's basements, they start to realize that as people sleep, these seed pods grow and replicate those people. This is a novel of paranoia. It's a science fiction horror novel. Jack Finney's writing is typical of some of the novels and movies of that time. There's a humorous, wisecracking manner to the way people relate to each other. There's a melodramatic love story and an investigation which nobody believes the outcome of. Finney has a workmanlike quality to his writing. It is probably one of the most atypical examples of science fiction horror from the 1950s. The novel and its concepts have been adapted many times in film, but we're going to take a look at two specific adaptations from the novel, both of them called Invasion of the Body Snatchers. There's one from 1956 starring Kevin McCarthy and then one from 1978 starring Donald Sutherland. Let's first look at the 1956 film. As I said before, it was based on the serialized novel in Collier's magazine. The novel itself came out in 1955 and this film came out in 1956. It features a tremendous performance by Kevin McCarthy as the doctor of the town. This is a very faithful adaptation. There are very few changes from the novel, although the ending is changed. In the novel, we have more of a cosmic ending. And in the ending for this movie, we have a more paranoid ending. You don't believe a word of this, do you? Sure, it's fantastic, but it happened. Don't just sit there measuring me for a straight jacket. Do something! Get all the Will ball. Miles be believed by the authorities? Now let's look at the 1978 film. This film starred Donald Sutherland, Brooke Adams, Veronica Cartwright, Jeff Goldblum, and Leonard Nimoy. It was directed by Philip Kaufman. Screenplay by W.D. Richter, based on the novel The Body Snatchers, by Jack Finney. In this movie, we see spores leaving a dying planet making their way into space, traveling the solar winds, some of them reaching Earth. This movie is set in San Francisco. The feathery gray spores start to grow. They have flowers and people are interested in them. They take some of them home to examine. Our protagonist, played by Donald Sutherland, is Matthew Bennell. He works for the health department of San Francisco. And there is Elizabeth Driscoll, a laboratory scientist with the health department. 
She brings one of these flowers home and awakens the next morning to find her boyfriend is very cold and distant. She confides in Bunnell, and the story begins. This story hits many of the themes from the original novel, but it also has some 1970s quirkiness. Of course, there's Jeff Goldblum being gold bloomy, and we have some funny scenes with interesting dialogue. This one stands out to me. Kipples, a, a, a fresh bay leaf, and garlic. That's all. Yes. What is that? A caper. No. Do you presume to tell us what is in this stock? It's a rat turd. A what? A rat turd. A caper, a rat turd. A caper. It's a caper. Eat it. But one of the best things in this movie is a cameo by Kevin McCarthy. While there is paranoia here, it's more of a horror movie. This 1978 remake really focuses in on the body horror of this concept. The 1955 novel had what I would call a cosmic ending. The 1956 movie had paranoia, but a more conventional ending, I would say. And the 1978 movie has a horror ending. I'll give you a glimpse of that ending after the thumbnail at the end of the video. So if you don't want to see it, make sure you exit on my thumbnail. So what do I think of the novel and the two movies? The novel itself, I think I would give it a 7 out of 10. It's a good story, well told, in a workmanlike manner. It delivers some of the cliches that we associate now with the 1950s. How about the 1956, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Kevin McCarthy is amazing in this movie, and I do like the ending. It is mostly faithful to the novel, and this is one of those rare cases where I think the movie is actually better than the novel. I would give it 7.5 out of 10. And now, how about that 1978 remake? I think everyone can remember some horror films they first saw when they were teenagers. This is one of those for me. So there's a nostalgia to it for me. But as filmmaking, I'm not sure if it's as good as the 1956 film. But because of that nostalgia for me, I give it 7.5 out of 10 as well. So I'm curious. What are your thoughts on The Body Snatcher and these film adaptations, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Do you have a favorite? Are there some more contemporary adaptations that you like? Can you see its influence on movies like The Faculty? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, make sure you read the book. It's almost always better than the movie. Except perhaps this time.